This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom Wacom.com. I've been using Wacom products for my digital illustrations for 15 years. I prefer to work on a Cintiq, which is an LCD pressure sensitive screen, which allows the user to draw directly on the display surface. The Cintiq allows me to be able to draw and paint digitally in a way that feels natural and very close to how I work when I paint traditionally. I personally work on a Mobile Studio Pro, which is a travel size Cintiq so that I can work on the go. And for the studio, I work on the 27 inch Cintiq, which offers true to life color on a high resolution display, giving you clarity and color sensitivity in creative areas like drawing and painting, image editing, 2D, 3D animation, game development, and so much more. I'm happy to announce that Wacom and I will be giving one lucky artist who participated in this episode drawing challenge, a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 inch. Congratulations in advance, and thank you, Wacom. I thought it would be kind of fun uh, just to tell a little story about Steve Brodner, and uh, <laughs> I think you, you might enjoy it. But uh, basically, years ago, I, I went to New York, and my agent set up a bunch of meetings for me to, uh, to meet with magazines, um, art directors, and that sort of a thing show people my work. And the night before, uh, there was a Society of Illustrators show in New York that I was a part of, and I went to the show. And uh, that's the first time I ever saw Steve Brodner in person. Um, he was, he, there's a lot of people hanging around him. And uh, he was, you know, looked really busy. So I didn't approach him. But I was like, Oh, man, it's Steve Brodner. Sometime tonight, I got to go up and I got to talk to him I gotta introduce myself. He's just, you know, he was one of those guys where he was like a hero to me, you know. And, uh, and to my surprise, he noticed me and I didn't even know that he knew who I was at all. So I, I, it was, it just blew my mind, but he basically, um, said, Hey, are you Jason Sealer? You're Jason Sealer. Now, if anybody who knows me, they know that it drives me absolutely bonkers when people say my last name incorrectly. (laughs) It's Siler for any of you out there who are wondering, but, uh, so he said Jason Sealer, and right away, even though I couldn't believe that this great hero of mine knew my name um, or knew who I was, every time he said Sealer, my my heart sunk, <laughs> and I and I was trying so hard to ignore that that annoying voice in my head that's just like, oh, it's Siler, man, it's Siler, and it, it was just funny because all night long, you know, he came up to me and he talked to me and and introduced me and then he started introducing me to people that were coming up to him like oh have you have you met this young artist jason sealer and i'm just like oh oh it's siler it's siler you know it was driving me crazy but it was just funny because here i am hanging out with this hero of mine i can't believe he even knows who i am and all that i'm thinking about my mind is you're saying my name wrong dude um and it, anyways <laughs> we had it was a really good night i got to meet a lot of awesome artists that night too but the cool part was Steve was like, hey, uh, tomorrow, would you like to come to my art studio? Come see where I work and hang out and get some lunch or something like that. And I was like, oh, man, that would be awesome. So the next morning, I had a few meetings set up. I think I had a meeting with Major League Baseball. And I went in for a meeting. And uh, they basically, I, I walked out with a full page illustration and then also two small spot illustrations for the world series program. So it was a pretty cool thing. So he was really excited about it. So basically he asked, who else do you want me to call? And I said, Rolling Stone. I mean, that's, that's the main magazine that I wanted to get into. So long story short, he calls Rolling Stone and basically I end up getting my first Rolling Stone job plus the major league baseball thing. And he was really excited, so he's like, "Hey, let's let's go to lunch. I'm gonna take you out to lunch to celebrate." So my agent took me to the Society of Illustrators, um, where they have a restaurant there, and really, really good food, by the way. And uh, I, I wasn't really much of a drinker then. Um, I like to drink a lot of wine now these days, but at that time I didn't really drink. Um, and my agent Richard was like, "Hey, let's let's get a really nice glass of brandy. That's gonna go really, really good with this fish." And I was like, sure, no problem. So it, it was around noon, and I had uh, my first glass of brandy. And I, it was really good. I really liked it. But the funny thing was is it really hit me hard. And I didn't realize um, <laughs> that I didn't realize at all that uh, I was tipsy. And um, so all of a sudden, now I'm, I'm, I'm tipsy. It's around 1 o'clock, and I have to uh, make my way through New York to a part of uh, New York I'd never been to before, trying to take the train, 
and uh, all that sort of stuff to get to my hero illustrator's house, Steve Brodner. And so I'm like scuffing my feet on the ground. And here's the thing. I had a brand new pair of um, Fry shoes. Now, they're really, really awesome shoes. Very well made, expensive shoes. Um, I no longer have them. Um, <laughs> but they, they were brand new at the time. And by the time I showed up to Steve's house, these brand new shoes I had, the one the one of the shoes on the on my right foot, I think, the sole had split apart from the shoe because I was dragging my feet so hard because of how tipsy I felt. <laughs> so I show up to Steve's studio with my shoes split apart, my cheeks all rosy, and clearly with a, a, a glaze over my eyes and my face because when I opened the door, Steve was like, are you okay? Is everything okay? And I, and I told him, um, I'm a, I feel a little buzzed, man. <laughs> my agent took me to lunch and I had brandy and I told him the whole story and he was like, oh, okay, well, why don't you come in and sit down and I'll give you some water. And then he showed me a studio and he's like, you know what, let's get some tea. And then we went to this cafe nearby and we shared sketches with each other. I showed him my sketchbook and he had his sketchbook and we just, we talked about art and drank tea <laughs> and it was just a really good time. So anyways, uh, I hope you enjoy a little personal story about me and Steve. He's an awesome guy. I think you'll really enjoy this interview. Um, I had a really good time talking to him. Without further ado, Mr. Steve Brodner. Steve Brodner. Um, first of all, I want to say really quick that uh, it's a huge honor to talk, with, you know, to do this talk with you. And um, I've known you for a while now online, um, but uh, maybe met a couple times in person, I think, at the Society of Illustrators. But the one thing I want to say um, that, you know, I'll, I'll kiss I'll kiss your butt a little bit here up front and then and then we'll forget about it afterwards. But but like, hey, don't, don't, don't do it. It may be. <laughs> Maybe germs. You yeah, know? but uh, to... you know, it, it's there's a, there's a lot of illustrators out there who I have been influenced throughout the years, um, who I've looked up to and respected, and quite honestly, you're one of the only ones that still does that for me. Um, <laughs> and I'm I'm not trying to diss other people, but um, I've been following your work since I was probably sixteen, seventeen. I started noticing it. Um, and it consistently inspires me. Um, you, you keep doing new things. You're, you're, you're on fire. You, you just keep going. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't want to quit. I don't, I don't <laughs> know when I, you know, I've overstayed my welcome. I'm, I'm making a pig of myself. Yeah. No, I mean, in all seriousness though, like I, you're, you're, you know, as you know, I do a lot of caricature stuff, but I also do a lot of like a realistic portrait type work. Caricature is my favorite. Uh, in the caricature illustration world, there there aren't, there's not, I'm not really inspired or uh, by very many caricature artists, like as I was way, way in the beginning when I was getting started. Um, but your work has that, um, there's just something about it that I keep going, oh, damn, he did it again. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, I mean, just also, just aesthetically, you know, how, how you choose to, um, uh, I don't know, you just got a really interesting style that I really uh, am personally inspired by. Um, so I was wondering, um, just to start this off, what, what, I, I know you've been doing this for a while. You started off with like a lot of pen and ink type, type work. Um, and I think that was like earlier on, if I remember correctly, you were doing a lot of journalism at the time as well, and then kind of illustrated some of your articles. Um, could you talk maybe a little bit just about how you got started with the whole caricature thing? Well, um, it's a funny thing. I mean, I, I, it was never really an intentional thing to consider and think about and go into as a, some kind of a choice. Um, it just sort of happened. Mm -hmm. It was a very organic thing for me where I, I, I started as a, a little boy. And I think this is probably, this is a, a, this part of it anyway is a very common story. Um, maybe most of us have had experiences like this. You're the kid in school who everybody says, uh, could you draw the Flintstones? Yeah. Draw me. Draw, draw uh, Bugs Bunny, right? And you suddenly become very popular because you're, you're the one who can do it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then so it's like 
you know, maybe in some cases, an athlete will be the person who is sort of loving <coughs> basketball or football or baseball and then uh, gets encouraged. And then oh, that's, you know, that's sort of the end. That's that's the, the beginning and the end of you, because once you're encouraged, then you you do tons more and then you get better because you've done tons more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what happened to me uh, without having any real goal uh, about it. I just became the kid who draws and then you become yeah. the school artist. Yeah. Did that happen to you? Were you the school artist? Yes, I, I didn't have. Um, I mean, I wish when I was in school, it would have made me cooler because I, I really didn't have very many friends. Uh, and that was pretty much all I had. Oh, Jason. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah, but I, it's it's funny because uh, I I don't really like thinking about um, my school. My edge. I'm always telling my daughters like, you guys got it good, man. I, I had to like learn how to run fast a lot of times to get away yeah. from people and, um. But yeah, I mean, same thing for me. Like I, when I got home from school, um, the only thing I wanted to do was draw. And and when I was in school, I got in trouble for drawing on papers all the time. Um. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I guess that's probably most of us. Um, did you, when, when you started drawing um, for, like, what, what, what happened when you got to the point where you started doing it professionally um, for publication and that sort of a thing? Um, well, you know, that came out of school also. Uh, I don't know if, if it's as prevalent as it used to be, but back in the 60s, all the schools, all the high schools had their own newspaper. Um, and, uh, you know, I was always in love with journalism. I come from a, a, a very strong print tradition. And in my world, um, getting the newspaper every day, uh, at least one newspaper, there were, there were many in New York <clears throat> growing up. I, I'm from Brooklyn originally. And uh, so to me, the highest ambition possible would be a, uh, a cartoonist on a newspaper doing caricatures, doing cartoons. I, I marinated in Hirschfeld. I think you could probably see that in my work. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, every week there would be a New York Times with a big, quite often a huge half-page Hirschfeld above the fold on the Art and Leisure section of the Sunday Times. And, and this was a magical experience because the Hirschfeld, it wasn't just that he was a great caricaturist. And it was clear to me even then. He was actually doing a magic trick every Sunday hmm. to transport you into the fourth row orchestra seat at a big Broadway show. Yeah. Excuse me, just a second. I, I have my friend here oh, that's super, okay. working on the plumbing. Um, so my dog may greet him as he comes back. Um, that's what Hirschfeld was doing. He wasn't just drawing caricatures. He, he was designing um, a composition in which uh, expression of face and expression of the hands and the, and the body. Yeah. Where yeah, everything exactly. was kind of a dance. There's such right? a flow to it. Yeah. Yeah. There was a dance that was all about the story. So he's not drawing, um, think of any actor that he would draw, like Carol Channing or Zero Mostel. Or uh, uh, Richard Burton, any character that he would do in a show was not, it wasn't Richard Burton, okay? It wasn't Julie Andrews. It was Richard Burton as King Arthur in yeah. Camelot. Yeah. It, it was the character that he was, he was not interested in who these people were outside of the show. What <laughs> he was you was the show. He yeah. cared about the drama, he cared about the story. And these are the things I teach when I teach illustration and when I teach caricature also in portraiture. It's mm -hmm. all about the story. Yes. And, and if you can think about who that person is inside and what kind of a person he or she is and what they're, what they're doing and where, they're, where, do, where are they coming from, what do they have for breakfast today, what are they feeling like, where are they going, what do they need, you know? These are all things that actors ask. Yeah. When an actor does a, a, a play, uh, quite often they'll think about what that character did before the play started. And and if the character doesn't die during the play, what, what he or she is doing after the play is over. Yeah. And, and, 
and that's what we do. Um, and that's the real thing I got from her show was to care deeply about character and story. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if this is going to be on the list of questions, but I, I, we might as well just get it out of the way right now. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> cause I think, cause I think this is essential to what I'm about as an artist. Um, caricature for me is not or portraiture is not about making big things big and small things small exactly i i do caricatures at parties for 15 years and i i know that game and it's a cute game <laughs> and i think anybody can do it <laughs> yeah but the great caricaturists like al Hirschfeld, like david levine ed sorrell these people are looking at faces and saying, what's under there? What's under the surface? How can I tease out the thing that's under the surface and get that to the front and put that on, arrange the features yes. so that, you know, uh, Trump is more Trump. Mm -hmm. Can you make him more of that? <laughs> Whatever that you think that is, make it more of that, right? Can you make, <laughs> can you make, yeah. Hillary Clinton more of that yeah so you're emphasizing not what's on the face yeah I mean that's that's exactly that's um the one thing that that I it drives me nuts I, I have a I know a lot of people in the caricature world a lot of them are friends of mine um and a lot of them are obsessed with the exaggeration it has to be exaggerated like crazy in order to be a caricature um and and, and in, in some ways that's really you know, funny and uh, powerful when it's when it's handled the right way, but um, it, but it can't it can't just be all about the exaggeration. It's 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 like story is king. You have to tell a story. Um, it's not it's not just picking out the worst features. It's how everything works together to create the the feeling and the essence of that person. Um, and um, does Donald Trump have a mouth like a vagina? <laughs> His throat looks like one. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's something to that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's telling what what are you trying to say, Stephen? What are you trying to say? Okay, I don't think so. <laughs> hey, no, hey, yeah. no. My mouth doesn't look like a vagina. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When you say it, it, looks, it sounds like he's actually oh, yeah. speaking through a vagina. But that's the thing that, um, that uh, when I was talking with my buddy from Pixar, we were talking about a similar thing with character design is that it's, it's about, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's got to be about the story in order to, to keep things moving. But it's also about um, like us as artists sort of have to be actors. You know, we have to we have to kind of know how to play the part and move and and think about it that way in order for for the, for it to have a life that it deserves. You know, and that's one thing I love about your work is your like your trumps um, are hilarious. Um, but like I said, I've been following you for a long time, and um, one of my favorite books. I see you've got the poster there, um, the Freedom Fries. I've got the book right here, just in case, so I could show everybody in case people. Um, so anyways, uh, what Beckwell was saying is uh, the, the, uh, that the book, the one thing I love about the Freedom Fries, is there's so much awesome artwork in that book. And if, it, if anyone hasn't gotten it, you need to get that book. But um, I love that just the, the you know, going from, from uh, you got Nixon in there, you're going through Reagan, both the Bushes, got Clinton. Um, there's some great Rush Limbaugh's in there. And there's a lot of stuff. And then there's a lot of just beautiful watercolor work. And that, watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. So it's an amazing um, book for inspiration. But I love watching how, the, like, I'm not going to name names, okay? But there, there are certain illustrators out there that when they illustrate a certain person, it's the same exact way every time. And that's one of the things that I love about your work is that you don't just, you don't just draw Trump the same way. It's, it's like, how many more ways can I fuck this guy up? And it's the best. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I think it's boring <clears throat> to, to say I've figured it out and I'm only... But you know, there, there are a lot of cartoonists who are not caricaturists by trade, and they need to sort of get by because their strong suit is putting ideas together, right? Um, and uh, um, they do different things and have different purposes. There are very few daily political cartoonists who are truly good caricature artists. And Telness is one, for yeah. sure. Um, uh, Jack Oman also is pretty good at caricature. But these are people who are supreme 
artists. They are athletes. They do it every day. Yeah. Uh, coming up with an idea that blends things together so that not only do they make sense, but they also have a punch. They're powerful, subtle in many cases. I have uh, unlimited, unbounded admiration for that. Uh, they don't really need. I mean, you and I spend a great deal of time looking at faces and thinking about, well, what am I going to do about this face? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is what does this face really mean, and and how do I interpret it? Uh, because caricature is um, illustration. I think writ small. It's like here. This is this is all you get. Yeah. What, what can you do? David Levine was the greatest of the 20th century could just give you this and that's it. And within the context of that face, uh, he could do uh, remarkable things, do astounding things, make, make people sometimes look nothing like themselves at all. And yet completely them, he's drawing their id, mm. he's drawing their, mm. their subconscious, their inner soul. Yeah. I don't know if, if you remember who William Buckley was. This uh, sounds he, familiar. But... It's a right-wing commentator, super famous in his time, talking 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s some. And uh, he was uh, host of a, of a not a, books and the conservative movement and National Review and Firing Line on PBS and a column every day in the papers. He was just a dynamo of the right. Mm -hmm. And David Levine, who was you know, like me, a, a good lefty, uh, saw him as a rat. <laughs> and, and if you want to Google that, anybody listening to this wants to Google David Levine, William F. Buckley. Yeah. See a portrait of him that doesn't really look too much like Buckley was a pretty handsome guy in, in his way, I think. Uh, he drew <laughs> a rat. I mean, he just with the ears out like this and the teeth like that <laughs> and it's like how did he do that yeah you know it was him but yet there was very little of him in it uh, in in terms of the features but he caught the, the, the feeling yeah he was master total master but he is doing inside out as as i try to do every time yeah i, I don't want to just render a face so when i do another trump uh it's based on the last trump really when I go back and I see the presidents and how poorly I drew them in the beginning, I, I'm patient with myself. I kind of like feel my way through it, you know, like the first ones. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good shot. My first George W. Bush was uh, from life. Esquire sent me down to cover his campaign for governor in 98 uh, because everybody felt he was going to run for president. So this was going to be uh, a chance to introduce him to Esquire readers. And, uh, I was pretty bearish and, and, and gentle with him. Uh, and as I went along, it just got more and more, you know, chimp-like. <laughs> not just very... chimp, not just chimp-like. Um, one of my favorite things about the bushes that you, you were doing was they look exactly like the monkeys in Jungle Book. <laughs> if you watch Jungle Book, it looks like a bunch of Steve Brodner, George Bushes, <laughs> just like, you know, <laughs> America, America, everywhere, you know? Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. He did that sometimes. He did this thing with his oh, yeah. arms. Very ape-like. <laughs> little, little chimp boy. Mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's what that's the fun. Um you yeah, know, very nice person, by the way, to meet George W. Bush was was something. It's oh, very yeah. important for illustrators, cartoonists, and caricaturists to never meet politicians because <laughs> they are very slick and they are very good at seducing you. And oh, you can yeah. wind up liking somebody who's a perfect asshole politically, but but quite often, these people personally are very nice. Bob Dole, Patrick Buchanan. I met these guys, and they're and they're lovely. <laughs> I had unbounded uh, admiration for Bob Dole because uh, he. Uh, now being he was, in New York, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, he was very handicapped. He he got shot to pieces in World War II. Oh, okay. And uh, and he was running for president, and I and I found out how handicapped he was it's not just his right arm but his left arm was mm. pretty bad too so he had to remember everything yeah and and he couldn't write anything down can you imagine being majority leader of the united states senate <laughs> and you can't write anything down uh he couldn't even cut his food so he was able to tell me what he knew about me 
he had studied up on me because he knew that I was calling his office and wanted to do an interview with him. I said, whoa, this is <laughs> astonishing. Wow. I, I would have voted for him, but I came out of the experience admiring him as a, as a guy, you know, what he had accomplished in his life. Mm. Uh, so it's good not to meet these people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say is like being a New Yorker. Have you ever bumped into Donald before? No, I've never seen him. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I've seen all the presidents. He's the one I haven't the seen. Only, the only weird thing that I have with him, um, well, there's a couple throughout the years, but he, uh, so when, I mean, I don't know if it was like around 10 years or so I was working for the New York Observer. I never knew that Jared Kushner was the editor. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, well, and, he didn't know it back then. Well, well, at least the last, like whatever years, I, I still didn't know. I had no idea. Um, and I remember... Um, uh, towards the end of of them stop, stopping the print, I had sent um, some some Trump sketches, um, and I said, uh, you know, you know, every once in a while I'll send a client some recent sketches to say, hey, you remember me? I'm still here, and uh, so I, I I did that, and and uh, the art director was like, oh yeah, we're not going to show these. And I'm like, I, I was so confused why I didn't know they didn't, they still don't tell me. Um, uh, later, I got a like maybe like it was about a year or so ago. I got a, a weird text with a picture of an, one of the oldest covers I've el I ever illustrated. Um, and it happened to be of Donald Trump. And it was on the cover of this religious satire magazine called The Door. And it's, it's a, a drawing of, I did of Donald Trump sitting on a throne with um, devil horns. And he's got hooves for feet. And he's, he's pointing. He's like, you're fired. You know? and he's pointing at the, uh, these little cupids hiding on the ground. Well, he sent me this photo of the actual magazine in a gold frame, and he said, you want to know where this is hanging right now? And I was like, where? And he's like, this is in the Trump uh, Golf Clubhouse. And I was like, what? What are you doing? And it turns out that he he loved it. He loved that particular piece, so he has it framed in a gold frame in his, in his clubhouse. Um, and that's when I found out that Jared Kushner was running uh the observer at the time and i was so confused like huh? and, and and he told me oh yeah he's he's the one that's really commissioned you to do a lot of the portrait covers he really likes your work and i'm like this is weird man so strange i had no idea no wonder they didn't like the trump sketches i sent because they weren't flattering at all <laughs> well, Drew, um, Drew, uh, friedman has some stories also about jerry kushner oh i'd like to hear that to yeah. talk to him about that sometime I interview drew for one of these yeah That'd be Oh yeah, uh, I definitely will. But uh, um, you know, it's really not good to get close to these people. They are, they are not um, um, going to give you anything you need. Yeah. Uh, you you because it's not our job to really know them personally. It's our job to know what they stand for. Yeah. You know, a little bit like Hirschfeld, caring uh, only about. Uh, what uh, an actor is playing on the stage. These are actors, and they're playing something on the stage. And quite often you'll find uh, a politician is very different at home. Yeah. Private. Well, you know, I think, I think too, though, this situation is so much different because the difference about between Donald Trump and everybody else is we, we've known Donald Trump for years. We've known, The guy never hid the fact that he's a, a pompous, rich douchebag. He's never hid that. I mean, I... I I knew yeah, Donald Trump. I agree on, with you, Jason. Yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think that's true. I think to really? people like you who have read news and are, you know, educated, <laughs> you're absolutely right. But there are millions of people out there who don't read news and, yeah. and are, are not sophisticated. And they watch that TV show, which was on for 20 years or something. The Apprentice? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, See, never I, ne saw it. I never no, watched it either. <laughs> right. We don't watch this. But you have to understand, it was on for 20 years on a network. It made a tremendous amount of money. And it's very hard to have a hit show for one year, yeah. let alone whatever, 15, 20 years, whatever it was, where he comes in. So what happens? They don't see him as a befuddled fool. They, they <laughs> see this huge you know, master of the universe coming in and sitting on this throne. Yeah. And everybody is praying that that he will, you know, wink at them or show favor in some way. And that was the, the point of this show, that um, 
All these people are risking things and working hard for the favor of this great genius. <laughs> yeah. Who is a total fraud. He's an actor. He's uh, as, well, as, exactly. Like, I mean, the, the funny thing for me was like, you know, when he was running for office and I'm, he I'm hearing all these things coming out and people are surprised and shocked. I'm like, have you ever heard him on the Howard Stern show? The guy talks openly about having orgies and stuff. And you're surprised that he you know, he's saying the kind of stuff he's saying, you know, and the, the best part about that, the, I, w I was so entertained during during you know the, the uh, debates i never thought he was going to get past that, that, that certain stage he's up there like calling he's like jed you're a poopoo head okay you know like that, that's about as sophisticated as it was like no line ted cruz ted you're a poo -poo face and it's like yeah we want trump's like what happened and and it's still i mean i know it's it's like, what two years or so now and it's still not quite sunken in it's like this is real um but it means what it means is that for that audience, that was fine. Yeah. So, Poopoo head was was <laughs> humiliating for you. Yes, right? it was. <laughs> lots of people, for maybe sixty percent, sixty five percent of the American people, that is like, are you kidding me? But for thirty five to forty percent, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is how we want our president to be. You know. Yeah. And it's oh. Like, all right. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the same 35% who think it's a wonderful thing to be gassing little children on the border, right? Yeah. Or 14,000 little children uh, uh, separated from their parents in prisons uh, with, with that number growing all the time. Yeah, the, it's insane. There's a level of cruelty. There's a level of disconnection from their own basic humanity, whatever, however much they had it to start with, mm -hmm. that, is, that made it possible – in you know a weird year with a strange combination of things uh for this guy to become president jason never again i mean what oh. we saw last month uh it looks like now the democrats will have 40 flipped seats in the congress that huh. is about as big as it could possibly get mm -hmm. it they've had the biggest voter turnout um of any midterm election in history uh and with Trump there doing his thing and the crimes coming out just today, we're hearing about, I don't know when this is going to run, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a week or two, maybe. So we're in November. Um, it seems that there's uh, now a story uh, moving on the wires about uh, Manafort having been Trump's go between with Julian Assange. <laughs> so information Assange was having was going from Manafort to the Trump and not just the Trump campaign, but Trump himself. And if this is true, and Mueller has the tapes, this is a smoking gun. Yeah. And Republicans will have a hard time saying there's no collusion. This is collusion. This is conspiracy with a foreign government to um, alter an election for president. And, uh, you know, we're at the beginning of the decline and fall of Trump. And uh, so... I, I, I say this to you and to all your listeners, whether they're political or not, politics is about to change big time and uh, the country is going to uh, retrace its steps. And, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, <laughs> yeah, now this, this, Just, this brings up a question for me concerning your, your work and what you do is um, I'm, I'm always curious about this with you. Do you start? Now, when, when you're following these news stories, uh, do you start just drawing ideas constantly? Are you like a stand-up comedian in a way where, like, you know, you've got a notepad and you, and you come up with an idea while you're on the train and you, you start just writing down the ideas? You know, and be, be, in other words, be, before someone hires you uh, for a publication, are you already working on the ideas and then you share them with, with editors and art directors or, you know, uh, is it both ways? I, I get calls from publications and I'm saying – less yes less of the time than i used to um i much prefer uh doing what you're saying which is to read the papers uh while i'm drawing to listen to the news i've got audiobooks going i'm reading always like three four audiobooks at the same time while i'm working i'm listening to uh it's disgraceful i know but I could listen to the newspapers on my iPhone. There's a way to get the papers to yeah. automatically read themselves on your phone. And uh, uh, podcasts and uh, TV, 
and uh, radio and every I'm just marinating in news all the time. Yeah. And so, oh, this is an idea. Let's do this. Let's do that. Yeah. And so I, I put a proposal together and I send it to an art director and an editor and they usually say no. And they send it to someone else and they say yes. And that's really the work. A lot of the work I get now. That's interesting. Um, they, yeah, that's kind of what I, I, I was kind of assuming. Because uh, yeah, you, you, you seem like the, uh, hey, no matter what, I'm going to be doing this, you know. I want to do my ideas. And yeah. this is what I tell my students also. I think the times we live in now where newspapers and magazines are contracting. And when you look at the kind of illustration that's being commissioned, um, a lot of it, I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of it uh, is very happy not to have a lot of content in the illustration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's there's a, a, a love of very beautiful but simple designs and quite often no faces just just bodies and shapes and colors and uh um design is king mm -hmm. now. and and a lot of illustrators who are absolutely brilliant beyond description were, are also art directors like christoph neiman and uh Edel rodriguez oh yeah yeah and, uh, these people uh, have been and still are graphic designers uh, on occasion and also illustrators. So, yeah. you know, there's a there's a sense that by calling somebody like that, you're going to get both. You're going to get the graphic design and you're going to get the illustration. And in the case of, of uh, Neiman and Rodriguez especially, you get genius ideas. They're amazing idea men. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of, of it, it. You said it's Edel? Adele. I always called him Adele. <laughs> I don't expect any art director or editor to understand where I want to go as an artist, mm -hmm. where I want to do as an artist. Um, fashions change. And, you know, I've been around a really long time. And I can understand how a young art director will look at my work and say, that's old fashioned stuff. He's not using vector or anything. <laughs> He's just drawing with a brush uh, or a pencil. Yeah. And, and uh, I'll tell you a really quick story that impressed me a lot. Um, if you don't know who, uh, if your v viewers don't know who R.O. Bleckman is, you should write the name down. R-O-B-L-E-C-H-M-A-N. <coughs> See, you say Bleckman, the <coughs> dog thinks it's fantastic. <laughs> it's because the repairs on my radiator are continuing, so this might be some... More noise for my dog. Anyway, <laughs> it's all right. Black, Blackman is still with us in his late 80s and still going strong. He's most famous for, you can look him up on Google Image, very, very simple drawings. They, he got into animation and did some of the most brilliant animations of all time. Blackman comes along in, in the 50s when he gets started. And he's, the, the whole industry is about hard edge uh, gouache and oil paintings. Uh, there's nothing like Blackman. Where does he come from? He comes from like outer space. Then yeah. you're going to do a whole job where it's little squiggly lines. And then here are these little people made out of three lines. So I approached him one time. We were at a conference and I said, um, can I ask you how that happened? How you came along at a time of all these elaborate paintings that, you know, you see on the walls of the Society of Illustrators, Cunningham, and uh, Bart Forbes and mm. uh, all these guys. I, I could I could get you a list, but you know <laughs> the traditionalists. And how did you come along uh, in the middle of all this and become yourself? And and he said, well, it's very simple. He said they didn't. It turns out they didn't really care about my style. They cared about my ideas. Yeah. When he would pitch something, it would be. Uh, a project that would be idea based and they would go with that. Um, and then they learned to like the approach and that that's where the, his career came from um, to, to see something fabulous by him. It was a very famous Alka-Seltzer, Alka-Seltzer commercial from the sixties of a man talking to his stomach. Mm. And what's the voices is Gene Wilder on this oh. or anyone who he was. It's a very old commercial. But if you if you take a minute and want to go to YouTube and just type in Alka-Seltzer, man talks to his stomach, you'll see this. <laughs> and 
And you'll say, oh, that's Blackman. I know his work. It's very famous. But the, the important takeaway for me was the ideas. Yeah. And for me, I think I'm going to just keep working for the rest of my life. Well, I hope so. <laughs> might not be too much longer. But yeah. I, uh, I mean, to... I, I'm in, I, I, I sell my ideas as yeah. much as I sell my style. You're... And I, every artist can do that. You're you're refreshing. Um, your work to me is refreshing because, you know, like, you know, every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm afraid to look at my phone. Like, oh, what 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 did he do now? Not you, uh, Donald, obviously. And but at the same time, I'm all I'm also like, okay, what did Broadner do? Because because you 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 post more than anybody I know. You do so much content and um and it's it's. You know, there could be a lot of terrible things going on, and you, you're so good at um, taking a terrible situation um, and intelligently telling a story that makes you f makes the the viewer like pulls them in, makes them feel better <laughs> about things, um, but also at the same time educating. Hey, this is what's going on, and we need to do something about this. Um, but also check out this awesome drawing I did. You know, and and that's that's one of my favorite things is um, it's it's. You know, it's all one thing to me. It's all yeah. blended. Yes, you know, yeah, it is. No separation between what I'm obsessed with and what I'm what I am creating. It's all one thing, and and I think that's that's very important because uh, if you can really be, you know, I know artists who are very absorbed in sports. Yeah, and that's what their work looks like. Or I know uh, Myra Kalman, who uh, is very sometimes she's absorbed in. In fashions, sometimes she's in, absorbed in literature. Uh, whatever she's personally absorbed, it's not put on. It's not a phony thing where I'm doing these jobs. Of course, you you know you do a job for pay, uh, yeah. and 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 a lot of people aren't this way, but I am. And I think that um, if somebody calls me, a lot of times an art director calls me with a job for with a job, and I'll know more about the story. Than he does, <laughs> you yeah. know. And I'll say, "Oh, this is related to this thing that happened before." And you remember reading about that? And he'll say, "No, really, that really." And <laughs> um, and that's because I'm living it, you yeah. know. I'm marinating in it all the time. And, and that's, that's the true. Um, that right there is the true essence of the kind of artist that you are. And I, that's what I love. It's it's like, you know, it, it's like it's like I said before. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, stand-up comedians, like these guys that are the real deal. They don't just write a joke every once in a while. They, they, they're constantly like, oh, my God, look at how that, that, you know, that guy's pants sit that way on his body. And they, I mean, this is how I think when I'm on a train and I start sketching stuff. But like you, you, you just see these ideas and you have to put them down. You have to start, you know, you, you live and you breathe the art. And what, what's great about what you're doing is you, you've got like such a message within your art. So you're, you're, you're kind of um, a multimedia um, attack machine here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just about you talk about comedians, and you know, you look at somebody like George Carlin. Yeah, you you could look at tapes of George Carlin on YouTube, and you could say this, he's the best. This is comedy, but really, it's he's just telling the truth. Commentary. He just shows up and he tells. He says it in a funny way. Yeah. He, he knows timing and he knows how to get a laugh, and he knows how to wrap it up with a big laugh, but. More important for him than getting the laugh was getting the laugh on the way to making something clear. Yeah. You know, at, it was at, almost like a therapy session for himself, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one way to stay healthy. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't make a lot of money uh, working this way. Uh, they're not going to put me on the cover of time. They'll put you on the cover of time. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. They won't give me the big the big uh, show place. Um, but, you know, I just, two days ago, I had a full page in the LA Times where I told the whole story of scorched earth politics going back to the election. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And, and so I read a couple of books and I made a lot of notes and I said, I can do this. Uh, boil it down to 10 to 20 separate panels and just show the major stops along the way. Anybody yeah. can do this. Uh, you know, I'm not special in this way. What's special about me is I don't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay up all night. Uh, and uh, I'm lucky that my, my current wife understands. Yeah. Uh, 
and all the people in my life understand. All my friends understand. That's that's why huge. <laughs> I, I show up at the at the club or at the you know to hear jazz or to or to uh, for dinner. Uh, catch you next time. If I'm on deadline, I teach too much. I teach four courses, which is stupid. <laughs> uh, that's the mistake. I, but my problem is I'm working for Alec Baldwin now. I'm doing a series yeah. of animations for him. And these are not political. These they're just funny, silly animations, and I'm having a wonderful time at it. But I didn't realize that all these things would be crashing together at the same time. And so, you know, that's a really good. I wanna, I wanna. Um, that's why I'm not. I wanna get into uh, uh, some of the, the some of the fan art and stuff. But I wanted to talk to you real quick before. This is a good transition. I wanted to talk to you about the Alec Baldwin thing, like how that came about, um, and uh, the artwork is just awesome. And here's the thing, I do, I do have to disagree with you about the people looking at your work and think, oh, this, this looks dated or old. I really do not think that at all. You, your work, you know, it, there's, there's some artists that, that stay stagnant and they have a style and it just doesn't change over 30 years. Your work, like your work now, I can look at your work back then and I'm like, okay, that's definitely Broadner. I see your work now, that's Broadner, but it's, it's always growing. So I, I, don't, I don't look at your work that way. And if it was that way, it wouldn't be on a show like the Alec Baldwin show. That is the, the nicest compliment you can give me, that the work is changing and you feel it's growing, you know? Because yeah. that's, the, that's the real goal, is that, okay, we're, we're, every time you pick up a paintbrush or every time you pick up a pencil, you're making discoveries, right? You're making new discoveries. Oh, this is a new way to draw. Yeah. You know, when I teach drawing, I teach seven, six or seven different ways of, of drawing the same face. Uh, and uh, this is... Uh, a, a way to um, to just see things differently and keep it fresh. So all all through my life, I've 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 I felt little breakthroughs happening. You know what I'm talking. Oh, I know yeah. you. No, yeah, it, yeah. Breakthrough <laughs> where you you discover, oh, this is this is a new way of finding this, or mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe if if I hold a pencil differently, even I'll get a different look. Um, these things come unbidden. They just come from hard work. And just keep, as I say to my students, keep your arm moving, right? And so if you're picking up on this, and not everybody does, but I do have to say to some people uh, who say to me, you know, I, I, I like this thing you did in the past and so on. I'll say, I do think I'm doing the best work now. Yeah. But and you know what? I think also um, to add on to that is that I think part of the reason your work works so perfectly with this Alec Baldwin show is that. I mean, the guy has class. He's a classy gentleman, but he's also funny. And your work is is humorous but classy. It's not you. You, you don't have cheap, um, like pun type work. You're you, you've got like, um, and I, I do got to say, uh, the fact that your your work is is mostly always traditional watercolor. There there is there is a classiness to that. That might be kind of the romantic in me because I I do a lot of digital work, but I love oils and watercolor. Everybody so, that reads this as as um, desirable or classy or intelligent or anything, I think it depends on where you're from, what generation you're from. Uh, I don't know how a 20 year old looks at my work. You know. Uh, well, you know what? I, I'm not trying to be offensive to 20 year olds out there, but I don't. To be honest, I don't. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what a 20 year old thinks of my work either. Um, well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't say I don't care. I just said I don't know. I do care. I want them to like my work. Well, um, they, yeah, I should, I should, I should, I do, I do care as well. I get an important job in a magazine, <laughs> and uh, I want them to feel like, you know, what I, what I, what I'm most afraid of is not being um, passe myself. I'm just afraid of um, the illustration community going back to a time when there was one approved style. And, and yeah. I, I'm old to remember those times. And I, that's what the Blackman story was about. There was yeah. a kind of an approved style. And then in the, in the 70s, before your time, there was this approved style of airbrush. And yeah. then there was this other approved style of, of uh, Matt Mahurin era, early 80s. And Matt is a fabulous... <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not putting him down. But he had this technique that, oh my God, everybody had to start to draw like this. Yeah. Even David Levine, you, you probably don't know this, but, but in the late 60s, David Levine became a thing. 
and there were dozens of people imitating David. Oh yeah, no, I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His style was fantastic, though. It's awesome. And Ed, and Ed Sorrell told me that he was one of them at one time. He says, "I didn't know how to do this, so I looked at David and I imitated him." I think. I think. Um, so there was a guy. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say. I think you know. Hopefully. Um, you know, it, it's different because we both teach what you teach actually in person with students. So I'm sure you're, you're actually seeing younger artists more and what they're doing. Whereas I teach online to people like in Africa and who, who knows where. So it's, it's a little bit different uh, teaching. Um, but it is, it is funny. You know, my daughter's 15. She just started high school and man, to get her attention or to, 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 to get her excited about certain things like she could give a crap about so, so many things it's like this new generation thing whereas the things that they're excited about um like like for example when i when i when i talk to her about um you know oh check out this you know, you know this cool drawing or or this uh this new song that i heard that i think's really cool it's immediately you're the biggest dork dad <laughs> like nothing's cool dad nothing about you is cool and you know it's really funny she just she just started at this art high school um called sen arts in chicago and it's all art based and she went to her freshman connection thing and she had to go and they talked about you know why are you interested in art and what you know what different influences and she goes oh well my dad's an artist oh really and what kind of stuff well he, he does time covers and he does you know, he works for Rolling Stone and whatever, Mad Magazine and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, she goes, Dad, now all these kids are like trying to friend you on Instagram and follow. They all, <laughs> they's like, they all think you're cool. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I am cool. What are you talking about? He's not cool. He's my dad. <laughs> yeah. And he to... She was embarrassed. She's like, oh my gosh, all these people think you're cool. And they're f I'm like, I am cool. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but it's a definitely an interesting dynamic. But um, you know what? Let's let's look at the – I don't know if, if you have the images up, but we should probably get into the fan uh, artwork and questions. Before we do that, I just want oh, okay. to finish the thought that I'm, I'm hoping that as we go forward, we can get to a more eclectic interpretation of what an acceptable – illustration style is so you can have you know uh, who is using a beautiful japanese line with digital to someone who's using just total digital uh, conceptions to someone like myra kalman who's using a, 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 a oil in a media yeah or gerard dubois who has got the kind of a, a um, surreal Magritte kind of thing going. Or you, where you have this hyper-realistic portraiture uh, and extraordinary uh, distortion and caricature. Uh, and then somebody like me, who's, who's kind of keeping up uh, editorial cartoon traditions dragged into editorial illustration. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that in the future we, we can go back to something that's eclectic Instead of this thing where there's there's this one kind of flat style that is kind of interchangeable, so an art director is comfortable. I mean, this may sound like heresy, but I, I am perceiving that art directors like similar artists in this way so that they can just mix and match on the page. Mm. And then get rid of this guy, we'll get another guy. And, you know, and, all the and fill that in. They kind of feel, it, it, looking at illustration, maybe the way you look at, type design that mm. these things have to go together rather than no here's the illustration mm -hmm. look at this illustration it's got its own little world in there dive in <laughs> Enjoy it. no Experience. i totally agree yeah so I'm, I'm hoping we can get back to that i i think that we're in danger of losing it because that other stuff is too easy yeah I'm, unfortunately i think that's true i but i i i would hope that um you know, yeah, I definitely agree. I would definitely hope that we could get back to that. I mean, I've definitely noticed illustration changing quite a bit just in the last like five, six years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, for me personally, I'm sort of an art nerd. Like I, I just I love good art and I love art that uh, that makes me feel a certain way and that pushes me and challenges me. Um, there there is still some of that art out there. Um, but uh you know, I do, I do see, uh, uh, I know I, I, I see like a lack of it in publication these days. Um, even with my own personal work, 
I've been doing a lot of portrait work, uh, which I don't mind. It pays the bills. Um, but when I, when I have to do portrait type work, that's not caricature. I prefer to be able to, to have fun with it and be like more painterly and expressive with my brushwork. And let's have some sketch lines here, but I find yeah. more and more, um, um, art directors are like, no, can we just have it like really neat and really nice and no sketch marks and no brush strokes. And it's, you know, and it's like, well, let's just use a photograph then. That's what, what I say. Like I, I would rather, you know, be expressive and, and, you know, and there's a few publications out there that have allowed me to do that. Like the New Yorker and Rolling Stone, they usually let me just have fun. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it for me it's it's all it's always about the art. I mean, I I got into doing this because I love art. I love drawing and painting, and and um, you know, so I'm grateful for everything that I get when it comes to to, to the job. And there's definitely, um, you know, it's 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 a lot better than than uh, you know digging ditches as the old man says. But uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so, shit in Louisiana. Man. Yeah. So um, um, do you want to um open up? The, yeah. the emails and what I was thinking you could do is just kind of look at the image and then say their name. And then what I'll do is I'm going to edit this and, and add in the artwork so that we can see all their artwork. Uh, the name here is rock Perkins. Is that the name? Well, the first uh, one I think should be, um, Tomas. Tomas is the, is the picture of the two of us. Uh, no, that's Rock Perkins. But you, you can, you know what, you can just say them in whatever in order. I'm not seeing a Tomas. Oh, yeah, I see. M Madaski? Yeah. Madaxi? Yep. Mm hmm Yeah, you want to do that? <laughs> <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, me in a state of, uh, near electroshock therapy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing, uh. Uh, startled by some new wrinkle in a job where uh, I'm being asked to uh, to do something <laughs> unexpected uh, and, uh, <laughs> and suddenly uh, blasted <laughs> out of my stupor uh, after having uh, you know descended into a, a state of um, uh, you know I get wow. kind of like <laughs> coma you know you're like in like I don't know about you but if you're if you're just li living in your right brain for so many hours and then something happens and an art director says, uh, you know, you forgot to, you forgot to put the dog in the picture. That's what that, that's what that expression is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it is awesome. So the next one should be by sky McBee. How, who are these people? Uh, fans of mine that I just said, Hey, you guys want to draw Steve Brodner and ask him some questions. Uh huh. So, okay. So we can kind of go through them a little bit quicker because um, I'm going right. to, so we have the Sky, question still. It's a, a lovely line drawing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a version of me as if I have, I'm kind of a retired uh, football player. I could be a coach. <laughs> the head is about twice the mass that it, uh, it should be, but I'm grateful <laughs> for it. I think, I think um, yeah. back in the day I would have been able to pick up more girls with a picture like that. Oh, there you go. This is Sarah, but I, I did okay anyhow. Sarah Hang. Yes. Arts. Um, yeah, I, I was given her that. I was definitely posing with that <laughs> idea in mind, and it really, it really does it. Um, I'm amazed at all this work, the tremendous amount of work for no pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, nope. um, nobody gets a nickel on there, this, right? There, there's a, there's a, I'm not going to announce it just yet because I'm still in the middle, but someone from this group and someone from the last group are going to get a special prize from Wacom for participating. So we'll talk about that later. But it's that. So the next one is Rock Perkins. He did like a, some I've kind got of. Miles Miller up, right? Oh, now. Miles Miller. That's the next one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, that is a, looks like a, a very light pencil drawing of me um, where I'm being, uh, very contemplative <laughs> and, uh, and and searching the universe for some answer. Uh, and I'm so perplexed that my eyes have completely disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a very small hand, which is true. I do have small hands. <laughs> Not as small as certain people that we can name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do have artists' hands. This is very Funhouse. The next one, Rock Perkins. Funhouse Mirror, where... Um, the uh, the drawing is 
um, uh, absolutely accurate, but it's it's twisted. <laughs> There's no there is no um, break in the continuum of the line. It does look like uh, it's a photograph that was treated. Yeah, then, yeah. I think he did some kind of photo manipulation type thing with it. Um, because I, I think I think I'm I'm looking at these elements and they look partly painted and partly photo. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where where, where he went between, but. That is definitely not the tattoo I have on my neck. Thank you, Rock. Oh, he's got you. Yeah. He's, he's giving you he a got, he, he got a, t a tic-tac-toe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's that definitely has the ideas behind character. <laughs> no, I don't see anything wrong with trying out your ideas in Photoshop. Yeah, uh, no. Seeing, seeing how something will work that way. Um, but it's the hybrid photo and drawing that makes me wish that we're all completely handmade. <laughs> um, and uh, but there you are. It's uh, <laughs> it's truth as he sees it. Oh yeah, and, he warned yeah. me that I was in it, and I was like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next one should be Mark Ram or Rom. Oh, I don't see him. Um, it just... should be in the second email. Oh, there's another email. Yeah, because okay. I sent I sent three emails. Ah, first five, second. Wow, there's a whole shitload of these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Mario Mario. Oh, that's no. the that's the sec Yeah, that you can you can do whatever order you want. All right. Uh, this is totally wonderful. Uh yeah, I'm 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 kind of like melting into my hand. <laughs> Much bigger hand here. Uh, and this is Kevin Niptash. Um looking uh, a good deal younger. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and uh, yeah, still startled. <laughs> this is Mark Ram. Uh, I don't know. I think I look like a zucchini here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's definitely what I deserve. I have this coming to me. And a much better beard than I had. My beard <laughs> is kind of like uh, crumbly. And here's me with jazz. Uh <laughs> oh yeah, this, is that the one with Marcos uh, Gamero or something like that? Marcos yeah. Marcos Gamero, yeah. Gamero. Oh yeah. I can't read properly. <laughs> We're both looking good here, me and Jazz. Yeah, that's a cool one. It's very cool. And and here I, this is by Manny Avetti. Yes, this is my personal favorite. He, Manny's a, a a good friend of mine, and he sent me this one, and uh. He's he told me to let you know that he's just a massive fan and uh, um, he's he's an awesome artist. One, this he has, has a disagreement yeah. with that. Uh, <laughs> there he is. But yeah, I love um, this piece. There's so there's so much uh, energy and animation in it. It's just awesome. Um, I love it too. I love it too. And it's it you know when you're drawing multiple faces, you really have the chance to um, explore and yeah and all this. It's more than just one idea, you know. You can have all these different ideas. So, in in one, I, you see my flat head, and the other one, the head sort of looks like it's giving birth. <laughs> you can see the tiny eyes. You can see the the big eyes. Oh, it's totally yeah. delightful. I love this, I love the this, one with the side the, the, with your head kind of going up like this. It just it looks like some kind of a Pixar character. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That may be happening to me one of these days. I don't know. <laughs> this is totally what, where I seem to be headed. Uh, hmm. Let's see. What, and there's more, right? There's a last five. Yeah. Yeah, there should be. All right. Oh, Eugenio. Candia. <laughs> totally sweet. How sweet that is. Unfair. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. See, if you have, if you have your picture taken with a dog. People, people oh, is that the one that David Yellen uh, with the little Trump and the dog there? Oh, this one is by Angela. Ange Angela Bell. Yes, Angela Bell. David David Yellen, and uh, I'm gonna feed Trump to jazz. <laughs> Test to see if his dog jazz truly eat anything. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Jazz is looking okay about it until he tastes it. <laughs> I love technique here uh using various tones of sepia and then uh color around it i'd like to know how he made this it looks actually painted which one with 
uh, David Yellen. Oh yeah, yep. I don't know. David, Might be David, Marker. He was a student of mine. I think. Yes, I think so. I think yeah. he he did mentions. Um, so yeah, I do have a couple questions from just from a few of the artists. So if you want, I can go. Did you see all of them? No, not yet. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm looking now at Dave Hargrove. He's definitely he was a student of mine. Uh, yeah. You know Dave's. You know Dave's work. No, I know this piece, and I think it's pretty awesome. He Dave Hargrove is someone to look out for. Bo both of these guys, Yellen also, but uh, he uh, he was in my summer portrait class last year, and uh, it's funny. It's a funny thing. He did a lot of years drawing caricatures of parties, hmm. and uh, and it's time. It's really time. Dave, if you're listening, I'll tell it to you again. It's it's time to attack the world of graphic <laughs> arts. Oh, yeah. Uh, awesome work, man. Yeah, Dan, really awesome. Dan McConnell is a Facebook friend of mine, and he showed me this the other day. And uh, def definitely have this coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> that tongue. Roar. So any of you guys listening, thank you for all the... The strong efforts on my behalf or and uh, against my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me read you some questions here from them, if you don't mind. Um, Kevin Nip, Nip, Niptash, if I can read properly, he says, um, growing up in a super red state, I have to watch uh, what I put on my Instagram due to employees seeing it, uh, um, seeing what I do. Being a political artist, did you ever feel like you had to censor your work in order to keep future jobs available? No, um, I was not interested in doing jobs that I disagreed with politically, and I turned work away that I I felt uh, would hurt me psychologically. I was I was more concerned about uh, not being true to myself and my own uh, point of view than I was about uh, getting in trouble with someone else. Yeah, and and I can. That's not to say that I think that's what you should do. I think everybody has their own situation, you know, and I, I live in New York, you know, and I've lived here all my life. I'm from Brooklyn. So I've always felt there's this big wide world. Hey, if you guys don't like me, I'll take my work across the street. I'll have somebody else. I can work with someone else. Yeah. And I do. And I, you know, I've been, I've been doing this since 1971, just like 45, it's it's seven years. And I, I've never really felt afraid. I've never spent a minute being afraid of anybody. Yeah. I've told some pretty powerful people to just take a flying leap. <laughs> and uh, That's awesome. And that didn't help me with those people and those organizations. Yeah. But, but I don't say that unless I'm aggressed against first. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is you're going to be pushed around in this field. Uh, I don't think you can be an artist without somebody trying to take advantage of you at some point. Yeah, no, that's not possible. And you're going to be screwed. Yep. You're going to be screwed somewhere along the line by somebody, uh, and you might as well make what your limits are. What are your borders? Uh, are you? Uh, what's the point where you fight? Yeah. And, and I've learned the hard way, you know? It's a really good thing <laughs> to be old. <laughs> I found <laughs> that being old is terrific because I have a lot of experience, and so a lot of times, like Groundhog Day, and comes around again. Oh, I know how to handle this. I fucked it up last time, but this time I'll do it differently. Yeah, and, and, uh, <laughs> that's, a good, so, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, you like that movie Groundhog Day? Oh yeah, yeah, I uh, love that. Movie. Hey Mar so, Mario, um, Mario asks, um, how much time have you dedicated and continue to dedicate daily to the management of this activity of yours? Uh, can you do it all by yourself, or do you also have the support of other people? And, and I'm assuming activity of yours, he means drawing, but I think you've kind of already, I mean, I think that's something that just, you don't, you just don't stop doing that. I mean, that's, that's like, that's like eating and farting, you know? Oh, I, yes. <laughs> I do all those things every day. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that, um, your art is your life. It's all one thing. It's integrated. Uh, I think integration of all these things is somehow a part of the word integrity um, you are, yeah, you are, exactly. you are, you are integrating your values. What's important to you as a human being, uh, with, uh, your work. And, um, 
you know, I say to the last guy, if, if you're involved in a situation in a red state or a blue state or a purple state where you have to be afraid to express yourself, I think there's some fundamental aspect of the situation that you have to change. Hmm. And it's really up to you. Nobody's going to take care of you. Nobody is going to fix your situation. You have to, I say this to everybody, you have to make sure that uh, you find your people. Yeah. And that may change from year to year. But always, I think illustration, as you know, it's about finding your people. Who are the people out there who are most likely to use my work? Uh, not just in terms of humor, but also in terms of political point of view, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, um, morality, of the way they treat their people, their, their freelancers. Um, you, you, move, you continually move yourself around based on that. Um, the saving grace for me is that I believe that we are in a, a marketplace and uh, if somebody proves to be an asshole, uh, I can go to someone who's not and there are plenty who are not. So, um, but in terms of drawing, draw every day, keep a sketchbook, you know, wherever yeah, you go, exactly. carry, carry a sketchbook with you. I have hundreds of these, all right, tons and tons and tons and Go to the theater and sketch people. Go to the a restaurant, cafe. Go to a bar. Oh yeah, money at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's ha uh, that, that's happened to me before too. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> it's just, the best. But never stop drawing. Keep going. And and uh, this is another thing about this that you may not know. These people listening in, not you. That every time you do a drawing, you get a little better. Yeah. You don't have to go to school. Uh, I say this to my SVA kids. I say, you know, it's nice that you're here, but if you just did tons of drawings every day, you just get better. Yeah, even if, even if you do a terrible drawing, you, you learn how not to do it. That's right. Uh, and you never get worse. You only get better. Yeah, that's so, good, good advice. A of, there's a lot of stuff that people worry about that they shouldn't worry about at all. <laughs> it's just, just really relax into this thing. Yeah turn out tons and tons of, you know, years ago, I was friendly with Philip Burke. You know, Philip? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm not like super close, but, but, uh, yeah. I've talked to him a few times. Now we were very young together and this is in the seventies and he would drag me to rock concerts and I, I'm not a rock fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm for my age, even for my age, I'm very old fashioned. I like jazz and I like classical music. So he took me to a, a, a couple of concerts and I'm just like scratching my head and I'm not, I'm just not into it. Uh, but he is drawing all the time and he goes backstage with his pictures and he's giving them to the artists. Hmm. And he did this for a really long time before you know it, they're asking him to travel with them. He's getting in Rolling Stone magazine. It, I, looking back, it was not a bad idea to give your work away. Yeah. It was a very good idea at that stage to say, uh, you know, this is a way for me to make contacts. But it was making contacts in the vein of interest that he had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To him, rock music was as powerful as politics is to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I think it's, it is. And if you go to the Rock Music Hall of Fame in Cleveland, you'll see, you know, 10 foot high <laughs> Philip Burke. Oh, man. His, if, 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 his paintings in person are are the best man i love it i love i've seen his paintings a few times in person and there's nothing like it just like seeing those big brush strokes and it's just awesome man yeah he, just, he draws from his toes and paints from his toes and he's he's uh but the the, uh, the case in point that i want to make for everyone listening is that he was aware of what he loved and he just went at it and didn't give a damn yeah. Any say. Yeah. And and so we were similar in this way. Just we 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 did it differently. Yeah, that's a really good uh good way to put it too. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I, he's he's another guy that I have on my list of people that I want to talk to. Um, uh, so I was, there's a couple more questions. Uh, so Marcos Gamero, he says, uh, greetings from from Spain, by the way. Um, what is a good tip for artists on how to survive doing art between business and family? Um, how to successfully be a husband, father, artist, 
all at the same time. Make sure everybody knows that you're an artist. <laughs> yeah. don't pretend to I was be thinking a, that same thing. Don't, don't pretend to be something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, walk around like this all the time. Yeah, there's no Every, mistake. Walk around like this with the sketchbook. And so everybody gets, the minute they see you, they get the idea that you're going to take out crayon and draw something. <laughs> and uh, I love it. And, and then when you when you have to say, I got to go back, you know, as I did from, uh, excuse me a second. How you doing? Finished? Yeah. Thank you so much. You're the best. Perfect. We'll be in touch, Eddie. Thank you. I have heat in my studio now, thanks to Eddie. That is a good thing, especially this time of year. God bless him. Thank you so much. Um, I went to Thanksgiving with my sketchbook. Uh, but they <laughs> all know me. I mean, it's like I don't have to introduce myself, but yeah. I drew the children. You know, there are always more children every year at Thanksgiving. More people are having babies, so I can draw all the babies. But I had to go back and do a Baldwin film uh, at uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Nobody gave me a hard time. Yeah. Nobody said, what's wrong with you? Why can't you sit with us and have more coffee? I told them at the beginning that I had to go. And yeah. so I left the party after it started at 4 o'clock. Now it's four hours later. I can leave. And they, <laughs> It's and appropriate. Anybody, and if anybody doesn't like it, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I got work you to do, man. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so the answer to the question is, you stake your claim on your life. And if you're an artist, you tell them what an artist is and how an artist behaves. And that means you're all in. You're yeah. doing it every day. When you go on vacation, you're bringing your sketchbook. You're going to draw the Grand Canyon. And my wife, she watched me for a little while and she takes a walk. <laughs> she says, give me a heart. That's time. awesome. I, I'm can... lucky because I married an artist and she, uh, she loves to, when we go on vacation, she goes plein air painting and you know, she loves to sketch. She knows that I want to sketch. And, and uh, so, yeah, I lucked out the second time around. <laughs> um, it, took me, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Me too, unfortunately. You know? um, but uh, it's much better now. I say so, things to me like, like you know, I, lo I like you very much, but it's the art thing. <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, this art thing that happens to be everything in your life, every part. Of, that, that, that part of your life, um, I really hate that part. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get a real else, job? Else is fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing uh, artwork for, you know, every magazine you can think of, and I kept getting that question uh, from my ex. When are you going to get a real job? You know? How unusual it is. Yeah be able to make a living from illustration oh yeah I, I definitely you know it's one of those things where I mean I've been doing it it's crazy to say this I've been doing it for almost 20 years already and it's weird um, but it's also you know one of the most one of the things that makes me most proud is that you know I've, I'm raising my family taking care of my family for 20 years because I like to draw you know um, that's a that's a great thing um, to be able to uh, write home about, you know. You're doing it in, in a time that is much tougher than it, when I was your age. You know, it's even tougher now than when I first started. It was it was way, way different. So I'm, I've been trying to evolve, you know, with the time and everything. This is, this is really a time when authorship, being your own producer, being your own um, creative engine is, yeah. is, is, is what's going to save you. It's not enough just to be able to draw nicely yeah. or draw well. Um, and well, that's uh, for sure. especially, especially with the onset of computers, I have students who are using something called Procreate, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a software that's on an iPad. Yeah, yep. It can give them a brushstroke of a 40 year veteran at Disney. <laughs> Right? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> These people are so extraordinary. Funny. How do they do that? Yeah. What great mind you have? Mm. And then it hit me ultimately. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I've seen people drawing with that. I, I actually sketch on one for fun. Um, uh, but I use, um, I actually got some pencil tools that a friend of mine um, made and gave me. And it it reacts and works exactly like a mechanical pencil or like an HP pencil. You can't make the br the pencil larger or smaller. It just is what it is. So it feels like you're naturally drawing. 
Um, but I stay away from those ink tools that almost do it for you. They do like a nice, you know, it's like, that's hilarious. I, a 40 year old, um, veteran, I almost said virgin there. Um, but yeah, that's hilarious though. Well, that's know, very uh, cultivated lines that just plop out of someone's hand. Yeah. Uh, is a you know a real animator it's not it's not fair millions yeah. uh, and 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 somebody who's just got no knowledge at all is just producing something that will fool you so yeah. that means that if you can really do it it's devalued yeah I, that that, that it, it, it's not like <laughs> anyone can tell <laughs> well you know it's funny that actually it goes with the the next question from eugenio uh, he says, out of curiosity, have you ever considered drawing digitally? Um, <laughs> so that's like a perfect segue right there. Yeah. Um, drawing digitally. Um, I, uh, I've tried. Uh, but having a plastic stylus, stylus uh, riding over a plastic surface is nowhere near as much fun mm -hmm. as having a piece of graphite move over a piece of paper. Yeah. Yep. And I agree and with you. Call me, call me old fashioned. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I love paper and I love art supplies mm. and, uh, I, I don't know this person, but I'd ask him, have you ever tried using paper? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, I totally agree with you on that. I, I mean, I do a lot of digital stuff. It's mostly for my publication type work. And that has to do mostly with the fact that, you know, the deadlines are insane. But I've spent the last 15 years teaching myself how to do digital drawing and painting where it feels um, as traditional as possible. Like I actually um, set my settings in a way that, that I struggle digitally because I want there to be a struggle. There should be a struggle when you're, when you're drawing and painting a little bit, a little bit of give here and there. And that's how you have your original voice. Um, but my true love is um, oil painting and watercolor um, and just drawing. So if I can somehow pull that off digitally, I'm a happy person. But um, ideas are going to be what matters, and I and I urge everybody to develop ideas, not just small ideas, but big ideas, books, films, big concepts where you're the author, as Blackman said. Mm, yeah, it's it's about the idea, and. Uh, once that happens, you know, the art will be as you want it to be. And nobody's going to push you around when you've got your own project going. You're the boss of that project. Yeah. Um, and I, I, to me, that's, that's the future. That's, that's where it's at. That's what's exciting to me. Uh, I, uh, when I first, the first time I met Hirschfeld, I met him a couple of times. And uh, he said to me uh, something that was really strange. He said... Uh, Remember, he says, you, at all times, you are trying to sell people something that they don't want. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, that's how it feels. That's such yeah. a good way. That's how it feels. Like even I, I, how many covers that I've been blessed to, to do, I'm always like, he, there's that feeling like you got to you, you got to sell it. You got to every time. It's not it, it doesn't it's not just you can't take it for granted, you know, like. That that's uh, that's an amazing quote. <laughs> that's awesome. So so if, if you're selling something that that nobody wants, what you're doing is you are um, accepting rejection. You're accepting mm -hmm. an occasional failure, um, but you're also realizing that you have a chance to be as great as you possibly can be in your style in your vein. But just don't take it so seriously when you're rejected when it's hard yeah that can be tough wrong you know um it's a jungle it's a real fight and uh and and, and you're going to be re find rejection it's just it's just a natural well, part it, of it. it's great you know for me personally it's great to hear this from you because um like i said before i hold i put you on you're like on a pedestal uh to me as far as like your your illustration work and who you are as a person so i think to everyone listening to this this is really awesome advice um I have one last question for you, um, and then I can let you get on with your day. Uh, Angela Bell, she says, do you have any personal projects that you wish you could do but never have time for? Oh, tons. All I do is come up with projects and ideas, and, you know, I just can't 
work as fast as my desires can. So mm -hmm. um, I would like to do uh, a massive painting of as, off of as many photos as I can of the children who are being uh, tear gassed on the border right now. Yeah, I would like to do a massive portrait of them. I'd like to do a portrait of many of the children who've been torn away from their parents who are now in concentration camps sleeping with, you know, aluminum foil blankets as possible. Hmm. Uh, uh, I want to do a book more history. I want to do a book on the presidents because every president has been presented to children in schools differently than they really were. Uh, well, that'd be they, interesting. Yeah. They're much worse than they were in some cases better than they were. <clears throat> um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I would like to organize a bunch of artists together and have, have us all do a book about the Russia scandal. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> take, but I, I don't have the time. If you want to organize it, Jason, uh, I'll, I'll hey, contribute. <laughs> I, I would be more than honored to, to do some kind of project with you one day. That's for sure. That's so, but so uh, way, I'm having all these ideas. I can only do one at a time. Yeah. It's very time consuming. It's meticulous work. Um, but if you can say one fine thing, um, that's a true thing, then that's an awful lot to be proud of because mm -hmm. most media is about pumping out great quantities of bullshit. <laughs> and and uh, it's our job as artists to counter the bullshit, to say as much true uh, uh, information, to, to pr provide as much true information as you possibly can. Yeah. Because, because that, to me, is our biggest crisis right now, is a crisis of information. People don't know where to turn for news. They're being told that reality is false and that what is false is real. And uh, those of us in media, and we're all sort of in media, I think do have a very important responsibility to tell the truth. Yeah. And that's, and that's even though I exaggerate to make a point, I, I do not engage in bullshit. And, um, that's and awesome. that's the biggest thing anyone can do. Catch yourself involved in promulgating bullshit. Stop it. And then <laughs> come out and tell the truth and, and sell the story someplace. Or even just put it on social media. Because, mm -hmm. that's, you know, I've done pieces. I did a piece of Donald Trump co combing over a swastika tattoo on the top of his head. Yes. Awesome and, piece. <laughs> thank you. And, and it got, uh, published in the nation about this big, like five inches high. But it was so popular on social media, it wound up getting projected on the sides of buildings. I'm sure you've had that. Where a piece gets blown up and people are at a pussy hat march carrying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, people said, I love that cover you did for the nation. I said, it wasn't a cover. It was a little thing. Yeah. But social media made it big. Yeah. And then it won awards, it got into books, it was published everywhere. Isn't that interesting? How powerful social media is now? That that anybody could could uh, make a make a splash without ever being published anywhere. Yeah. Just being good and having the stuff. You know, a lot of Edel Rodriguez piece pieces are not published. He just puts them out. And they make a big splash. Yeah. Well, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. And they have his career because other people see it and they call him to do a, a cover for The Economist or something like that, Der Spiegel. And he's uh, just carries on. Yeah. So. Well, that was awesome, Steve. Thank you so much for talking. And uh, I mean, this was a great conversation. Uh, I mean, I learned a lot of cool stuff. And uh, overall, just thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to talk on the, the old I, podcast here. <laughs> I want you to know you're, I'm a big fan of yours. I think your work is stellar. You never do anything that isn't perfectly realized and oh, thanks, very man. clear in terms of point of view, even if it's not a caricature. If you're just doing a straight portrait, uh, I sense your your personality there and the the soul behind the brush or the stylus. Um, <laughs> I teach you sometimes uh, in my portrait class. Oh, wow. Weeks, I had them look you up <laughs> in a nice way, I mean. And uh, there was uh, there was a lot of uh, astonishment in the class. So oh wow, I'm flattered. Thank you so much. Hey, you, you're you're uh, a, a young legend. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. 
I'll tell my I daughter mean, you said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and tell her I told you that you're cool. <laughs> and that all these guys here think you're cool. All these That's awesome. Contributing art think you're very cool. Yeah. Well, I really and appreciate that. Come around, we'll have lunch. Oh, for sure, for sure, man. We'll definitely do that. 